today we will discuss physics first year chapter number 3 that is motion and force there are few terms that we will explain first the first one is distance and displacement second is speed and velocity third acceleration fourth displacement type graph and fifth is velocity time graph so first of all distance so distance is the actual track covered by a body so must remember this distance is the actual track or actual wave followed by a body due to its motion the second is displacement for displacement remember what the displacement is change in position of a body change in position of a body for example a body is moving from position a to position b by this track so this distance or actual path passing a to b by points 1 2 3 the motion of body from a to b b by passing 1 2 3 4 is called distance cover a to b by passing 1 2 3 and 4 is called distance while the motion from a to b or the position of that changes from a to b is called displacement and this red line shows the displacement so if body moves in 10 meter circumference of a circle if this is circumference of a circle 10 meter a body starts from point a and reach to point a again so we can say that its distance cover is 10 meter while as its position didn't changes it reaches at the end again so its displacement is zero so this was distance and displacement the second is speed and velocity so speed is the distance per unit time while the velocity is displacement per unit time or s is equal to v is equal to s divided by t the speed is scalar quantity that require only magnitude in its unit while the velocity is vector quantity to point the unit of velocity velocity is equal to s by t that is meter per second to point its dimension this is length divided by t or l t to the power minus 1 acceleration a is equal to rate of change of velocity delta v divided by t the unit is meter per second per second or meter per second square to point the dimension it is l t to the power minus 2 this is the dimension of acceleration the acceleration can be positive or negative dependent on v if velocity if velocity is increasing then the acceleration is positive if velocity is decreasing then acceleration is called negative or negative acceleration is also called deceleration or it's also called retardation the next is two graphs the one is displacement time graph in the another is velocity time graph displacement time graph mean if we take displacement that is x on y axis and if we take time on x axis and velocity time graph it means that if we take velocity on y axis and time on n axis then this is called velocity time graph now there are two thing the first thing is the slope this is slope or this is slope the first thing is slope up a graph the second is area under the graph area under the graph second is area so there are two points you must remember for displacement time graph and velocity time graph so area is area is the product of length and breadth or the area is the product of two lengths so 
to find the area we will multiply x by t area is equal to x multiplied by t now x multiplied by t we know that v is equal to s divided by t or displacement by we can do displacement by s r x so we can write s multiplied by t from this equation from this equation we know that this this equation area is equal to s multiply by t in the elastic time graph area is equal to v multiply by t v multiply by t so, as we know that v is equal to s divided by t r v is equal to s divided by t so we can write that s is equal to v cross t so the s equation area is equal to v multiplied by t r v is equal to area is equal to s so if area under v velocity time graph give us distance cover now for the slope to find the area we will multiply those these two quantities between which graph has been drawn now to find the slope we will multiply the first quantity by the another in this case we may multiply by s divided by t in this case we multiply v divided v divided by t so v divided by t is equal to acceleration and v is equal to s divided by t is called velocity so the slope of velocity time graph give us velocity while the slope of slope of displacement time graph give us velocity while the slope of velocity time graph give us acceleration so this slope will give us acceleration why because a is equal to v divided by v divided by t in this case this, this will give us v is equal to s divided by t s divided by t or v divided by t is equal to acceleration now the same was in fluid dynamics descriptor between f we draw stress strain curve and this is the slope so slope is equal to stress divided by strain and we know that stress is directly proportional to strain and stress is equal to k multiplied by strain where k is equal to stress divided by strain so stress divided by strain is equal to k so the slope uh, slope of stress versus strain graph give us spring constant now we will solve few mcqs now this is mcqs which states that velocity time graph of car moving is given below find acceleration 1 acceleration 2 and acceleration 3 and also the total distance covered its values are its value as 450290405 units are si all these have units system international now to solve these or to solve this first we will follow acceleration of 1 acceleration 2 and acceleration 3 so we know that a is equal to delta v divided by delta t r v f final minus initial divided by change in time so for this portion we know that at, at point t is equal to 0 the velocity was 0 and at this point when the velocity was 20 time was Five. So, final velocity is 20, initial is 0 and time taken is 0 to 5 second or 5 second. So, 5 divided by 20 is equal to 4 meter per second. So, this is A1. So, option A may be correct. A may be correct, B may be correct, C may be correct but 5 is wrong. The next is to find A2. A2 is delta V divided by T. So, the final velocity is for this portion. The final in initial velocity was 20, final was 20 and the time taken was 5 to 15. So, velocity was 20 minus 20 divided by 15 minus 5. So, 20 minus 20 is equal to 15 minus, minus 5 is equal to 10. So, 0 divided by 10 is equal to 0. So, acceleration is 0 so acceleration is 0 
so option five is right in which acceleration is five so now option b and c which one is correct a third one is a3 where a3 is equal to delta v by delta t where final velocity was zero and initial was 20 c0 so minus 20 divided by 20 minus 15 that is 10 that is minus 20 divided by 5 that is minus 4 or this is 5 20 now the answer is 5 4 are 14 so I will make changes in this in the option so uh, this is minus 4 so or they can give us 1 minus 4 is the second is plus 4 so is the answer is minus 4 so this one is wrong but now we will find distance score also for confirmation now this is as we know that the velocity is increasing so the acceleration is positive in this case acceleration is 0 is the velocity is 0 in third case the velocity is decreasing so acceleration is equal to decreasing or this acceleration is also called retardation or deceleration now to find the distance score we know that that slope gives us dividing the co y component divided by x so a is equal to v divided by t v divided by d gives us acceleration so the slope gives us acceleration that we find now to find the area under graph so one will on y axis is velocity and x is t so we know that v multiply by t is equal to s or v is equal to s divided by t so if we multiply v by t then it will give us s in that case if they are perpendicular now suppose if this is the velocity v multiply by v multiply 20 by 5 then this will give us the distance score in this portion but we can see that in this graph 0 to 5 the velocity is 20 we can draw this rectangular so if we divide the whole rectangle a rectangular area is 20 multiplied by 5 here area is equal to 20 divided by 5 that is 4 but if you find only this triangle data this is half of this so we will multiply it again by 20 we will multiply again divide by 20 or we can cite that area is equal to for this whole thing area is equal to v divided by t or area or total distance score s is equal to v divided by t and for half triangle now for this we will write that s is equal to v divided by t divided by sorry i made a mistake to find the area under vt graph give us v cross t if we multiply v by t this will give distance so for this whole s is equal to v divided by t in power half triangle we will multiply this power 2 because double of this triangle give us rectangle now to find the distance per whole thing a distance score for this whole graph we will divide it into s1 s2 and s3 so s is equal to s1 plus s2 plus s3 now s1 is equal to as s1 is triangle so we will divide it by half and multiply v by t as v is equal to 20 and t is equal to 5 so 20 multiply by 5 jama s2 s2 is equal to 5 into 15 the distance is 10 and the height is 20 so 20 multiply by 10. we will not divide it by 2 because this is rectangle in third case is 3 that is 5 into 15 difference time is 4 so 5 5 multiply by 20 and divide it by 10, 2 because it is again triangle so 2 tens are 20 10 fives are 50 plus 20 tens are 200 plus 2 tens are 20 and 10 fives are 50 so the answer is 300 so is the answer is 290 and 200 290 is 9 near to 300 
so we will choose the answer is 290 or they can give us directly the options 300 so the whole answer is 40 minus 4 and 300 so the answer is 40 minus 4 and 300 this was the solution the next is Newton's laws so Newton proposed to proposed three laws the first is Newton's first law or law of inertia that is a body at rest will be remain at rest and a body in motion will be remain at motion unless some force is acting on x on it the second last law state that if a force is applied on a body it will produce acceleration and greater the force acceleration produced it's uh, the body will accelerate in its own direction and it will produce acceleration and the ex acceleration is directly portion to the applied force the acceleration is the directly applied to the force greater the force greater will be the acceleration putting constant here we will put m r we can also say that there are two things the a is directly portion to f greater the acceleration will be greater f force is applied greater f force decrease acceleration decrease and second factor is mass so it is inversely portion to the mass if mass is greater then less acceleration will be produced if mass is high then low acceleration will be produced if mass is less then high acceleration will be produced joining both of these we can write that a is directly portion to f divided by m or we can write also write that a is equal to f divided by m or f is equal to m a and this is the equation of newton's second law a third law is called law of reaction for equal for every for react uh, for every reaction there is equal and opposite reaction for every reaction there is a equal reaction but opposite and direction so for opposite and direction we we put the sign negative for example a body a apply a force on body b f a b or f b a f b a means force applied on a by on a by b so f body a apply force on b this is called f b a so, so f force is applied up on b by a so the b will apply the same force on a but that pull force will be the in this direction so we will put sign here minus negative and this shows us that f b a is equal to minus f a b or we can also write it minus f a b is equal to f b a. The next is equations of linear uniform motion. So there are three equations basic. The one is V F is equal to V I plus A T. V I plus A T. The second is S is equal to V I T plus half A T square. And the third one is 2as is equal to vf square minus vi square these three are used very much and how to solve problem this experience on how much have you used you have used these these equation in the past so we will solve more example on this now for in case of gravity this equation is replaced by vf is equal to vi plus gt and this will be replaced by s is equal to V I T plus half G T square or this will and this will be replaced by 2 G H or 2 G S is equal to V F square minus V I square. Now here is term that is used as momentum. Momentum is defined as the product of mass and velocity. It is denoted by P. P is equal to M V kilogram meter per second. This is the unit of momentum or momentum p is equal to 
m v where v is equal to s divided by t so we can find dimension as m l t n 2 minus 1 now there is the relation between the force and the momentum so are the force and second law of newton so to find this relation we know that f is equal to m a or we know that f is equal to m a is equal to delta v divided by t or we also know that the product of mass and velocity is called momentum so rate of change of velocity into m is equal to delta p by delta t or we can this is equal to rate of change of momentum is equal to the force or so the rate of change of momentum of our body is equal to the applied force so the relation between momentum and the force is f is equal to delta p divided by t so this is the relation between momentum and the length so we can write another unit for momentum is is p is equal to f into t so newton second is the unit of moment and the other unit is kilogram meter per second these two are the unit of momentum now the third is impulse impulse represented by j impulse is when a large force is applied for a short period of time we call it impulse to find its unit we will call it newton into second and newton second is the unit of momentum also so newton second is unit of momentum and impulse so newton second is the unit of impulse j and p is momentum so this was the point the next thing is law of conservation of momentum and with it we will discuss elastic and inelastic collision or without the collision i will simply draw i will write the equation directly or maybe i will explain how it has come to us law of conservation of momentum law of conservation of momentum state that total linear momentum of isolated remains constant that total linear momentum or total p remains constant for isolated system isolated system mean that no external forces act on it on it external forces involved or act on it for example if we have two bodies mass m1 and another body of mass m2 the one is moving with velocity v1 and the second is moving with velocity v2 if this m1 collides with m2 then after collision m1 will move with velocity v1 dash and m2 will move with the velocity v2 dash so according to law of conservation of momentum as no external forces are applied so before the collision and after the collision the total momentum remains constant so here the total momentum is pt will be equal to this total momentum here pt is equal to momentum of body first and momentum of body second in this case this will be also is equal to p1 is equal to p2 our momentum of one is m1 v1 plus for two it is equal to m2 v2 now this will be equal to p1 is equal to m1 v1 dash plus p2 is equal to m2 v2 dash so this is the result of law of conservation of momentum m1 plus m2 is equal to m2 v2 or m1 v1 dash is equal to m2 v2 dash or we can also write that putting m1 turns on left side m2 turns on right side by rearranging we we will get that m1 v1 minus m1 v1 dash is equal to m2 v2 dash minus m2 v2 so you can 
you can find this equation for this so must remember only this that momentum remain constant p1 plus p2 m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 v1 dash plus m2 v2 dash the next the next is elastic collision and its all equation derivative now it is collision types the first is elastic collision second is inelastic in both collision momentum is conserved momentum is conserved but the second the difference is due to kinetic energy so in inelastic collision kinetic energy is not conserved while in this case kinetic energy is conserved so just remain that in elastic collision both are conserved p and momentum and kinetic energy so we will discuss here only elastic collision where momentum and as well as kinetic energy is conserved it means that momentum before and after collision remains constant or before collision is equal to after and according to kinetic energy conservation it means that before collision and after collision the total kinetic energy is constant it means that these both will be are equal so by the combination of this a this we will derive in either equation so new need of any derivation or let's derive the equation for elastic collision for elastic collision law of conservation of momentum stated for two body m1 v1 plus m2 v2 will be equal to m1 v1 dash plus m2 v2 dash or writing v1 quantities on one side m1 v1 dash is equal to m2 v2 dash minus m2 v2 are taking in one constant we will get v1 minus v v1 dash and m2 constant we will get v1 dash minus v2 now for this was for momentum for kinetic energy f2 body m1 m2 are moving with velocity v1 and v2 of m1 and m2 they hit each other and of the collision one moves with v1 dash and the second will move with v2 dash of its masses is n1 and n2 so for kinetic energy conservation we know that kinetic energy before and after remain constant so kinetic energy of before is kinetic energy of body a plus body b so kinetic energy of body a is half m1 v1 plus body b is half m2 v2 is equal to half m1 v1 dash plus half m2 v2 dash half half is constant in all of these so taking both of these half half constant we will cancel it with this so we will get m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 v1 dash plus m2 v2 dash no kinetic energy sorry kinetic energy is equal to half m v square so we will get square run this so m1 v1 square plus m2 v2 square is equal to m1 v1 dash square and 2 v2 dash square now writing we can also write at this this is the formula of this is on the left side so we will let m1 v1 square minus m1 v1 dash square is equal to m2 v2 square minus v2 dash square is equal to m2 v2 square so taking m1 constant we will get v1 square minus v1 dash square and we will get as m2 is equal to v2 dash square minus v2 square and this is the formula of a square minus b square that is equal to a minus b into a plus b so expanding it we will get v1 minus v1 dash and v1 plus v1 dash is equal to m2 is equal to v2 dash minus v2 and to v2 dash plus v2 so now 
this is equation 2 or 1 are simply dividing 2 by 1 so divide this whole thing by this so m1 on the left side will be cancelled with m1 this will be cancelled with if we read derive this by m1 into v1 minus v1 dash is equal to m2 into v1 dash minus v2 so this will be cancelled with this this will be cancelled with this now v1 minus v1 dash will be cancelled with this v1 dash v2 dash v2 dash minus v2 will be cancelled with this so we will get v1 plus v1 dash is equal to v1 plus v1 dash is equal to v2 dash plus v2 this is for this case this is now we noted that before collision v1 minus v2 is equal to v2 dash minus we can also write this equation as as we get that v1 plus v1 dash is equal to v2 plus v2 dash plus v2 or v2 plus v2 dash now we can also write that v1 minus v2 is equal to minus v1 dash and 2 minus v2 now this was the equation for elastic collision now by solving these and these for v1 dash and v2 dash we will give the relation for after collision velocity that is much important so in kpk books this topic is not solved correctly and by solving these two we will get the equation for v1a2 so just learn this equation par by heart what is the equation par v1 dash and v2 dash so to find the relation for v1 and v2 dash just learn by heart as i draw by step by step so this is the first put sign plus the second put v1 v2 this is v1 this is v2 this is v1 this is v2 now divide it m1 plus m2 divide this by m1 plus m2 right here m1 plus m2 right here m1 plus m1 plus m2 so learn learn this a plus b a plus b so in this is v1 plus v2 v1 plus v2 now put here divide m1 plus m2 m1 plus m2 m1 plus 2 m2 in all of these in this case we are we have to point m1 so we will minus m1 2 from m1 v1 is v1 dash is equal to m1 minus m2 in this first portion this is called first portion and this is second portion for v1 and first portion let m1 minus m2 this is for v1 dash is equal to m1 minus m2 and v2 dash put in second portion m2 minus m1 now v1 is equal to 2 times of m2 and this is times of 2m1 so the upper portion of power this is m1 this is m2 m1 m2 so here m1 is dominant so we will write 2m1 in this we will write 2m2 m1 minus m2 and m2 minus m1 so this is the formula for velocity after collision so remember this formula by heart and we will solve the example of this that 70 gram ball having at 9 meter per second collides with 140 gram ball that was at rest find the velocity after collision i write this example from kpk book that is example this is the example i want to show you so this is the example on kpk book which have a 70 gram ball at 9 meter per second as right collides with another ball of 160 gram which is initially at rest find their velocity after collision so I don't know in which way they have solved it, putting the values, eliminating V2 in equation the and the. So it is impossible for someone to 
know or to learn this procedure or to solve NMCQs on this procedure. I don't know how they solve, but today we will solve it in easy way. So, to start the solution, first we will write that M1 that was 70 gram and M2 that was 140 gram. This was moving with velocity 9 meter per second and collide this was moving with this was at rest so its velocity is 0. So they both collides and after collision the 70 gram ball start with velocity v1 dash and x over 40 gram ball starts with moving velocity v2 dash and we have to find v1 by v2 dash v1 dash and v2 dash. So this is the formula. So we know that v1 dash is equal to v1 dash is equal to m1 plus m2 v1 jama 1 divided by m1 plus m2 v2 and v2 dash is equal to m1 plus m2 v1 plus m1 plus m2 v2 this is 2 times of m2 this is 2 times of m1 this is m1 minus m2 and this is m2 minus m1 so this is the formula that we will use but this is the initial velocity v1 and v2 that is 0 and 9 meter per second so we know that v1 is equal to 9 so this will be 9 and v2 is equal to 0 so this is equal to 0 so 0 multiplied by this whole thing is equal to 0 and 0 multiplied by this whole thing is equal to 0 so the formula will be so easy for us now so v1 dash is equal to m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into v1 and v2 dash is equal to m2 minus 2 times m1 divided by m1 plus m2 Two. The further solving the MCQs is just a piece of cake. Now, to find the answer in SI units, we will convert the mass into the kilogram. So, 70 gram ball. So, convert it into kilogram. We will multiply 70 gram. Or the easiest way to convert 70 gram into kilogram is is we want to convert 70 gram into kg it means that we need here kilogram so to to get k upper we will divide also it by k so this is our 70 divided by k into kilogram so answer, answer is 70 divided by k here k is 10 raised to power 3 so moving upward it will become 10 raised to power minus 3 1 2 3 so 0 0.07 is the answer and this will become 0 0.140 so putting the mass here we will put m1 is 0 0.07 minus 0 0.14 divided by 0 0.07 plus 0 0.14 and 2 where v1 is 9 meter per second in this case 9 multiply by 0 0.07 plus 0 0.14 and 2 2 times in 0 0.07 so the answer is minus 3 meter per second and the second is 6 meter per second so these are the answer so this was just easy by calculation this way by using this formula and you must learn these two formulas for v1 dash in v2 dash so the question was they have got 70 gram ball collides with 144 140 gram ball and this start moving so we will use this formula that v1 dash is equal to m1 minus m2 into the into the is equal to the so in this question they have given that v2 is equal to 0 so putting v2 is equal to 0 this whole thing is become equal to 0 and this whole thing is also become equal to 0 because anything multiply by 0 is equal to 0 so we have the formula just this is v1 dash and this is for 
v2 dash as i have used here so putting the values we will get the answer minus 3 meter per second and 6 meter per second tile motion so start let's start projectile motion so if somebody threw a ball on our surface at angle between at angle theta that is between 0 to 90 degree the path will start moving forward as well as now moving upward so at some point it will start moving downward again and it will reach to the r so the ball that moves that was that live at angle 0 to 90 between 0 to 90 goes by parabolic path it was two dimension it also it was also moving upward and upward and forward so as the ball was moving in upward and forward so the diamond so it was two dimension motion two dimensional motion in the path was parabolic so the projectile motion is two dimensional motion under the action of gravity as the ball was moving upward but on each point the force on of gravity acts on it downward so due to the gravity the ball moves downward and at the last it reaches the our surface so the projectile motion is the motion is two dimensional simply like two it is two dimensional motion under action of gravity under action of gravity so to the points to remember is it is two dimensional motion the second is the path powered by projectile is parabolic must remember this path powered is parabolic now this the path of projectile that a projectile followed from start to end is called a special world that is called trajectory so this is called the path powered by projectile is called trajectory the first point a projectile is the two dimensional motion under the action of gravity it is two dimensional motion it is works under the action of gravity the third is the path powered is called parabolic the fourth one is the path is called trajectory now the horizontal component of vector remain constant to over the pride at this point force act on it so due to this force the body was moving forward this was due to the velocity vector component so the velocity vector component or the velocity horizontal component vx it means the horizontal component of velocity was constant why constant because due to this constant the body starts from this position and reach to the end without any stopping in the vertical velocity the vertical velocity this is the velocity component this is the velocity this is vx and this is vy so due to vx it is moving forward and due to vy it is moving upward so if we know it was moving upward 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 but at the top it stops moving forward it stops moving upward and starts moving downward so this vy doesn't remain constant but at the top it becomes zero so vy is equal to this is not constant and at the top it is zero but we can also say in this portion it was positive in this portion it is negative now the third team is everything in projectile that was in up, upward direction is considered as positive like the velocity that was moving upward in this portion was positive but in this portion the velocity is downward so it is negative as the gravity is moving downward so we will also consider gravity is negative now they sometime give us velocity or we can find the magnitude of velocity in that case if and only we have the velocity x component and y component so if we have x and y component we can solve by chapter number two formula that is 
u f is equal to u f x square plus u y square. Now, there are three things that are important. The one is the height. That how much upward did a projectile went? This is called height. The second thing is the linear distance. That is called range. And the third thing is the time. That how much time did it took to start from point this and reach to it point N. So to learn it, the formulas by heart use. Write these three things: height, h, height, r, range, and t and time. Make an an alphabetical order. So we know that g, h, i, j, k, l, m, p, q, r, s, t. So the first one is height. The second is r, and the third one is t. So the formula for height is v i square sine square theta divided by two g. V i square sine square theta divided by Two g. In next case, in next, we will convert this two into two and this two into two. It means we will remove this two. In the second case, we will remove this two. In the third case, we will remove this two. This will be a circle like this. So in second case, we will write as if we remove this remove, if we remove this two, then this will two will increase its sign, and we will get v i square same as this. And sine, this two will be large. It will become sine two t divided by g. So we remove this g. So this g if we decrease, so this size of this two increase. This is my self-made self-made formula. So this we will increase this two. This formula will become v square sine two g divided by g. This was the formula for r. Now for a time, we will remove this formula. This two and the size of this two will. Decrease, increase. So it will become for two. We can write v i two r two v i sine theta divided by g. So by learning the first formula, you can learn the rest of two formulas is same. Now this was the time period formula from this position to this position. Let me draw it again. So. For projectile, when a body is thrown at some angle, it will be move. It will move in two-dimensional path. The theta is zero to ninety. This distance is called range, and this dis distance is called height. Next is the path is para was parabolic, and the path is also called trajectory. Now, this time is when a body start moving from this position and reach to an end. Now, to the top, the time reach to the top or time to submit. We will find time to submit. So, if we take t from this position to this, so to the half of the t, the time will be total t divided by two. So, to submit t submit is equal to t divided by Two. So if we divide this whole thing by two, this two will be cancelled with this. We will get v i sine theta divided by g. This is time to submit. Now for range, this is range. For maximum range, the sine theta value ranges from zero to one. So For maximum range, the sine theta is also is always is equal to one, so it will be one. So one multiplied by v n v i square will get v i square divided by g. So this is the formula for maximum range. So must remember or must bear in mind these three formulas. So that all points. Next, there are two terms that range, angle. For range is complementary. It means that the angle for sum is always be equal to 90. What this mean? This mean it if we throw this the velocity of if we throw this angle of 40. So add something to 40 to get 
90. So if we add 50 to this, we will get 90. If we add something to this, we will get it 90. So 40 into 50 is equal to 90. So if we throw the ball at either 40 degree or 50 degree, it will reach to the same point. Or if we throw a body at 10 degree, this is 10 degree or 80 degree. 10 degree or 80 degree. Or if we throw a body at 20 degree or 70 degree. Or if we throw a body at 30 degree or 60 degree. So, see, if we decrease, increase the first value, now the range for two angle is complementary. Angles per range are complementary. Complementary mean that the range is same for two angles. Which two angles? If we add these two angles and we will get 90. So for how we can get 90? So if we add 10 into 80, we will get 90 or 20 into 70. We can also write 21 plus 69 in we can get unlimited combination if we use 80.001 so there is for unlimited so we can get unlimited combination for same range now per se we cannot for specific range we can use specific angle for specific range we can use different angles to get that range so this was another point now Now we can see that I would like to draw three easy diagrams. In this diagram, we can say that height is maximum and range is less. In second diagram, range is maximum and height is less. But it is possible that if we throw if this height and range up same if we look into this this is height and this is range so if we look a height is equal to range so if height is equal to range then what will be the angle par that so we will calculate it or this is the specific value so beside calculation we must learn it by at what angle I think this is 72 degree at 72 degree the height is equal to range now the maximum range range is maximum at what at this is maximum at 45 degree why how 45 degree range is maximum because we know that the angle used in and this is sine 2 theta now sine value starts from 0 and reaches into 1 the maximum value of sine theta is 1 and that is accomplished only at sine 90 so to put here 45 sine 2 multiplied by 45 is equal to sine 90 and sine 90 is equal to 1 so to get sine 2 theta is equal to 1 we will put 45 because 2 into 45 is equal to 90 here is this 2 so 2 multiply 40 is equal to 90 and sine 90 is equal to 1 so r is maximum at 45 degree now let's give us single rate again so a two-dimensional motion is called projectile all the points that are in projectile important are number one that this is two-dimensional motion the second is the it is due to the force of gravity a third is the path powered by projectile is parabolic the fourth is the path is called trajectory the fifth is the angle is 0 to 90 a sixth is the upward quantities are the sixth is the x component or rectangular the x component of velocity is constant the seventh is the upward velocity or vertical component of velocity is not constant and at the top it is zero at the top it is zero this is point number eight 
नाउ पॉइंट नंबर नाइन इज द फार्मूला ऑफ हाइट टेन नंबर फार्मूला ऑफ रेंज इलेवन इज द फार्मूला ऑफ टाइम पीरियड नाउ टाइम टू सबमिट इज टाइम पीरियड डिवाइड बाय टाइम पीरियड डिवाइड बाय टू सो डिवाइड बाय टू विल गेट द फार्मूला नंबर टाइम टू सबमिट दिस इज द फार्मूला ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी नाउ टाइम पीरियड नेक्स्ट इज मैक्सिमम रेंज व्हाट विल बी द मेम मैक्सिमम द मेम द रेंज इज मैक्सिमम एट 45 डिग्री दिस इज पॉइंट थर्टीन द एंगल पार रेंज इज कंप्लीमेंट्री एट मीन एट सम इज विल बी ऑलवेज इक्वल टू नाइन्टी दिस इज द पॉइंट नंबर फोर्टीन सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट प्रोजेक्टाइल इन वी विल सॉल्व इट्स एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एंड एंड न्यू पॉइंट्स विल कम इन टू प्रोजेक्टाइल द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज फॉर ईटा सो आई वुड लाइक टू रिमूव दिस दैट दिस होल थिंग प्रोजेक्टाइल वॉज इन द एबसेंस ऑफ एयर so this is projectile if you want to stop it here if there is our target we want to hit it so we will do it by theta is equal to this so uh, if air is present in the body is moving so is the air will resistance is so the path followed in the presence of is project so it will move as little low so it will move as so is so in eta they give us in excuse that if someone is hitting a if someone is hitting a bird this is the bird if you want to hit it and you take shot on it so if we threw it like this then due to the air resistance your shot you will miss the shot and your shot will go downward so so to hit the bird you will target this place and if you want to hit this place due to due to the resistance you will become little lower than that and you will hit the bar so they want us them excuses if you want to ball so you will aim you will aim which position little upward from the bar or little downward from the bar or on the bar or none of these are any other option so we will aim on little upward so if we in aim little upward so due to the resistance the, it will move downward so we can only we can hit it that points now we will solve mcq on chapter number 3 1 by 1 mcq number first body covering equal displacement and equal interval of time is called uniform speed uniform velocity uniform acceleration so we know that v is equal to s divided by t where s is displacement when body covering equal displacement of time and equal interval we call it uniform velocity now if it cover equal dis distance and equal interval of time that will be in case of uniform speed so in this case is it covering equal displacement so it will be uniform velocity the next is instantaneous average velocities are equal when his uniform velocity and his variable velocity so if a body is moving with equal same velocity with variation of time so if we take look into this value instantaneous or take the average of these two so this both are same so when a body has uniform velocity we can call it that it's instantaneous and average velocities are same when velocity time graph is straight line parallel to x axis acceleration is constant zero option c or d or d so if this is velocity time graph and the velocity graph is straight to x axis it mean with the passage of time velocity is not changing or constant or change in velocity is zero so we know that a is equal to v divided by t as change velocity is zero so zero divided by t is equal to zero so acceleration is zero now in sequence number 4 velocity time graph velocity time graph slope of velocity time graph give us what so if this is velocity and this is t and this is slope so we know that for slope slope is equal to y component divided by t or quantity of y axis divided by quantity on x axis so on y x is this is velocity so v by t is equal to we know that v by t is equal to so 
vit is equal to s so s is equal to distance so slope of velocity time graph so slope of velocity time graph give us slope of velocity time graph v by t and we know that sorry a is equal to v by t and a is acceleration so option a is correct now velocity time graph area is equal to what are the area between the velocity time graph and the time axis is numerically equal to what so if this is velocity time graph so the area between v by t so if you want to study the area so we will multiply this by this v multiply by t so we know that v is equal to s divided by t so s is equal to v divided by v multiply by t so option if we multiply v by t the area of vt graph is equal to it will give us t so option b is correct this is distance so remember then a slope you will divide this quantity by this and what the answer is that will be the slope and in the area we will multiply this quantity by this so v by t is equal to area and v multiply by t is equal to s so the slope is acceleration and the division is and the area is give us distance excuse number six if slope of your time graph decreases gradually the body is said to be positive acceleration or negative acceleration if this is velocity time graph and this this in the slope decreases so as the slope decreases we can say at every point the velocity is decreasing with the increase in time so as the velocity is decreasing so the acceleration is called negative acceleration or deceleration or retardation negative acceleration or it is also called deceleration or retardation option b is correct if the slope of the velocity time graph in question number six increases increases this if we if they give us increase instead of decrease so in that case if the velocity time graph is increases so it's at each point velocity is increasing with the passage of time so as velocity increasing so acceleration is called positive acceleration question 8 for constant acceleration velocity time graph slope is parabola or straight so if we have velocity time graph and if velocity is constant or for constant acceleration for constant acceleration mean there is no change occurring in velocity or for constant acceleration changes or this is also constant acceleration changes are constant acceleration changes mean the velocity is changing at equal interval of time so for this the acceleration graph is straight when a body is moving towards earth its g value is taken as positive or negative so if a body is moving towards earth this is earth and this object is moving towards earth so this quantity will be considered as positive g will be considered as positive and if body is moving towards upward so for that body g will be considered as negative so in this case is it towards earth so it is positive excuse number 10 <coughs> change in momentum is called force impulse or acceleration so we know that impulse is equal to j is equal to f into t where f is equal to m a t also know we, we know that a is equal to v divided by t so v is equal to a t putting a t of v so v is called m v is equal to j where m v is equal to delta change in m v is equal to change in delta p so j is equal to delta p so change in momentum is called impulse so option b is correct now the time rate of change of momentum is called force impulse acceleration or what so we know that f is equal to m a where a is equal to v divided by t p m v is equal to p by t 
t so the time rate of change of momentum is called force so option a is correct property of body due to which it it opposes change in rest or motion is inertia weight option c torque or anything so according to newton first law of inertia every uh, due to the mass of the body it resists to change its motion in due to change it opposes change in its rest or its motion number 13 which newton law is also called law of inertia so newton first law is called law of inertia while the second law is about f is equal to ma and the third law is about action and reaction inertia of body is quantitative quantitatively taken as mass weight or both so inertia of body is quantitatively taken as mass and it depends total dependent on mass greater the mass greater the inertia greater the mass greater the inertia momentum depends upon force mass velocity mass and velocity so we know that p is equal to mv so momentum depends on mass and also momentum depends on velocity so option d is correct in sequence number 16 in an alternative unit of kilogram meter per second is so from the unit of impulse we know that j is equal to ft where f is equal to mat where unit of mass is kilogram area is acceleration is equal to meter per second square and time is second so we will get kilogram meter per second that is given here in this way we can also write ft is equal to newton second so the unit of alternate to unit of kilogram meter per second is newton second so option b is correct 17 unit of impulses so we know that j is equal to ft unit of impulses newton per newton multiply by second r if they give another option minus 1 kilogram meter second so then if they give us option like we found both of these in option then we will mark both dimension of acceleration is so it's easy a is equal to v divided by t v is equal to s divided by t one t is rest so t is equal to l and t is to the power square we will acceleration is lt minus 2 r to find the dimension of force mc squared number 20 for force dimension of force is equal f is equal to ma where m is mass and a dimension lt minus 2 so this is the dimension of force now to find the dimension of momentum to find the dimension of momentum p we know that p is equal to m into velocity mass is m and velocity is s divided by t L T minus one. This is the dimension of momentum. Now to find the dimension of impulse. To find the dimension of impulse is impulse J is equal to F T, where F is kilogram meter per second is the unit of J kilogram meter per second. So we can write M L T minus one. So momentum. n impulsive same unit so number 23 is same dimension is of delta p and j or delta p by t and j so option c delta p and j is same impulse the next is mcq's number 19 this is mcq's number 19 so mcq's num number 19 they tell us that <coughs> a snooker ball with velocity v collides with another ball at rest <coughs> the velocity of second ball is if collision was elastic so we will write the formula that v1 dash or v1 dash ki zarurat nahi hai simply we will write the formula for v2 dash which is equal to v1 plus v2 and m1 plus m2 m1 plus m2 r 2 times m1 and 2 m1 m2 minus m1 so 
in this case a ball collides with another ball at which velocity was zero and this velocity was v and v was two point v two dash so this was v two dash so v two dash is equal to two m one so both mass snow car both mass both balls have same mass so we can write two m divided by m one plus is two is equal to two m v one plus m one minus m one is equal to zero zero divided by m1 plus m2 and the velocity was also 0 so 0 so we will get 2m divided cancel by 2 and so v2 dash is equal to v1 where v1 was v so v2 dash is equal to v so the answer v is correct this is the special case of elastic collision in which both mass both masses are same and excuse number 24 taking off rocket can be explained by or can explain by law of conservation of momentum or law of conservation of mass so whenever the rocket bursts or start flowing it leaves the gases at a high velocity so to keep the momentum constant so small masses start moving with high velocities so to keep the law of conservation of momentum same the huge mass of the rocket start flowing with the some velocity so it is based of law of conservation of momentum the path of projectile is straight or projectile so whenever the projectile is thrown it follows a path that is called parabolic the path of projectile is called trajectory parabolic or else so the path of projectile is parabolic and it got special name that is called trajectory football to flow ball at maximum distance can can attain by 90 degree 45 degree 60 degree so we know that a range is maximum at 45 degree so the angle is true angle is 45 degree 20 h range bar projectile is same part 30 and 60 degree and 20 and 80 degree so we know that the range of projectiles are complementary and its sum is only is equal to 90 so for 30 and 60 is sum is equal to 90 so the range will be same of for 30 and 60 not for 80 and 20 because its sum is 100 projectile velocity in maximum height is so we know that the velocity of projectile is equal to v apex square plus v y square under the root so at high point the vertical component of velocity is zero so we will only get v apex square so v apex square cancel with the and v apex is equal to vf v cos yeah we ix is equal to ai cos theta so option is cos theta is right we cos theta angle for range of projectile are complementary supplementary or what so the angles for range of projectile are complementary its sum is always equal to 90 Mo motion of projectile is 1d 2d or 3 dimensional so motion of projectile is 2d because the ball moves upward as well as forward so it is 2d motion of projectile is due to acceleration or gravity so the motion of projectile is due to gravity excuse number 33 projectile is thrown so that it attain maximum range of 1000 meter how high it will rise so if this is the maximum range that is attained at 45 degree if maximum range is 1000 so we have to ask for h so the relation between maximum height and range is range divided by 4 so here range is 1000 so 1000 divided by 4 is equal to 250 so option b is correct this is the formula h is equal to r divided by 4 2 kilo next is 2 kilogram ball is thrown from a building and took 10 seconds to reach earth point velocity when it strike the earth they have said that this is the building they have thrown a ball from it the ball took 10 seconds to reach the earth point its velocity when it touched the surface of the earth so we have to ask final velocity the ball start from rest vi was zero and they give us they have given us the timing ask for vf so we know that vf is equal to vi plus at so as the initial velocity is zero so we will let vf is equal to at so to point t v is equal, vf is equal to a multiplied by 
t where a is equal to 9.8 multiplied by t is equal to 10. So 9.8 multiplied by 10 is equal to 98. R. MCQ number next is when we kick stone we get hurt. This is due to inertia or thrall law. So whenever due to thrall law, whenever if we do an action there will be in equal and opposite reaction so the most the, with the high speed we kick the stone the more we will get hurt so as we increase the speed and we increase the action direction will be also increased because action and direction are same but opposite and direction so this is thalda not inertia next is 35 numerical value of displacement to distance is so we can say that it this body is moving from point A to B. So this is A to B. Is this is it may go in this direction? This is distance, or it may go in this direction. So if this a body follow this path, so is this is distance. So the shortest distance is displace, displacement. So as the distance is greater, so distance divided by displacement. So this is greater than distance, so we will get one point some thing. The next is if this is the shortest distance, but body followed this path, so the distance and di displacement are same. So as distance and displacement are same, so in this case it will be equal to one. They ask numerical value of displacement to displace, displacement to distance. So in this case as the displacement is less and distance, distance is more so we will get 0 0.1 or something 0 point something so the minimum distance is 0 and the maximum is value is 1 so the value range is from 0 to 1 ball is thrown vertically with velocity of 98 meter per second it takes 10 seconds to reach the highest point find the acceleration it means if the ball is thrown with velocity of 98 meter per second and it to the highest point it takes 10 second where at the highest point body stop and velocity is equal to 0 and initial velocity was 98 and we are asked to point a so we know that 2 a s is equal to v f square minus v i square where 2 is 2 a is equal to g h is not given and we have to find vf is given vi is given so as final velocity is zero so we, we will remove this so vi is equal to minus vi is equal to under root 2 into g h 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiply by this is the time so we can't use this formula we will apply another formula Now, we have to ask for acceleration. Simply the acceleration is equal to delta V divided by T as the time is how much? 10 seconds. In the velocity is change in velocity is final velocity was 0 and initial was 98. So, minus 98 divided by 10 is equal to minus 9.8. Next is 5 kilogram mass is dropped. 5 kilogram body mass is dropped from 80 meter this is a 80 meter tall building body drop is 5 kg how much time it will it it will take to reach to earth so we know that its initial velocity is 0 and we are asked to find height so we can use maybe 2a is equal to vf square minus v x square initial is 0 we don't know the final, we don't know the S, so we can't use it. This equation. Next, next is S is equal to VIT plus half AT square R power. And G will use GT square S is equal to half AT square. So the next we know that initial velocity is 0, so this term will be decreased. We have asked for time, so time is equal to 2 uh, 2 into S. Uh, divided by g under the root so 2 multiply by distance is 80 so 80 divided by g is 9.8 under the root 9.8 or 10 10 8 is a 
80 so 8 2s are 16 under root 16 is equal to 4 so answer is 4 second enough for today solve as much practice as much as you can and if you don't know any solution of any mcq just whatsapp us or send uh, or, or or send your mcqs to the bank of mcqs page on whatsapp or comment on youtube channel or you can also send our whatsapp or instagram or to contact us on whatsapp you may send your problem mcqs or anything or you can contact about some latest formation so the number is here one nine six three nine double four so this is our whatsapp number you may contact allah peace it's enough for today done